Today, I'm going to teach you four ways to do woodworking's most essential skill, make a board straight. I'm going to share the four ways that I do without a jointer that I get the best results from. I do these in order of most cost-effective to most expensive. Number one, hand plane. Two, table saw and level. Three, router table. And four, track saw. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing you want to do is get a board that's already been flattened on both sides. So to do that, I have a short little video on how to use a jointer sled with a planer because you kind of need a planer unless you want to do the whole thing by hand. So check out that video on how to get two flat sides. And from there, now we can joint with our hand plane this edge to be 90 degrees to both of the faces. First thing you want to do is get it fairly flat. The way you do that is check it with a level. With the level, we're looking for two things, where we're touching and where there is a gap, where their light is shining through. And anywhere where we're touching is a high spot we need to knock down. For this, I'm using a Stanley number no. five. It's known as a jack plane. A jack plane is a jack of all trades. It can joint, it can smooth, it doesn't do anything perfectly, but it does it pretty well. And it is the plane that I would recommend to any beginner to buy first. And you can always get these at like a swap meet or flea market or something like that. And you'll have to put in some elbow grease to clean them up. And with that, we have a fairly flat surface already. But now we'll need to check it for nine. You can tell we were cutting at a bit of an angle. So I'll bring you into the hand plane and show you how I adjust that. So on the back of the hand plane here, right behind the iron, there's this little lever and you can see how we're just slightly that way. Well, it was pushing our cut out of square. So let's bring it back up to square here. You can feel the blade. And if it feels pretty even, then you're probably good to go. Your fingers are going to tell you more than what your eyes can. We'll make a few more passes and then we'll check for nine needed. Our second jointing method uses the table saw and a level. And this only works if you have a level that's long enough. And I wouldn't go anything more than 48 inches. But what you're doing is you're extending the fence. So if you have a curved board, the curve of the board will actually follow the fence and you'll cut a curve into the board with the blade. But by using a level, you're going to reference the flat side of the level against the fence, and then you're going to butt the board up against this. For selecting the orientation of the board, you want to make sure to push the board up against the level and have two points of contact. So you can see here I'm touching and here I'm touching. Uh, the other way where you have the board rocking back and forth like this, that could be an unstable, unsafe cut. You need at least two points of contact like that. This is really a fairly simple operation. Just keep the level tight to the fence and the board tight to the level and push it through like you would any normal board. You just have to push both at the same time and then go nice and slow because this can get out of hand quickly and uh, go slow. You might cause some burning, but it'll be worth it to be safe. Now you can see we have one nice and flat side. So rough cut and nice and flat. Now option number three is the router table. It is not the most affordable option because you need to buy the table and the router and everything that comes with it. But a router table, in my opinion, is one of the most versatile and widely used in my shop because you can do so much with it. So definitely worth investing. And if you do, here's another trick that you can use the router table for. Uh, first thing you need to do is replace your bit with a straight bit. And I'm using a flush trim bit here. It's got an up cut, down cut sort of deal going on. You can use your regular fluted two flute bit like this straight bit. Uh, I just find that they leave a worse result and are harder to line up. So spirals are nicer for a lot of reasons. If all you have is one of these, it'll work just fine. The setup for this round table is fairly simple. You take these little spacers and put it behind the outfeed side of the fence. 
there's two of them for the top and bottom to make sure it's nice and even and square. And then you just move the fence as close to the bit as possible without touching, lock it down, line it up with the bearing because the bearing is going to be the same as the bit. And then lock down your front of the fence, lock down the back of the fence, and you're ready to start cutting. And to cut, it is, again, very simple. You just push the board through and transfer your pressure over to the outfeed side as soon as you can to make sure that you are cutting the board nice and flat. If you put pressure on the infeed side, you're going to end up cutting an angle on the board. It's not going to be nice and straight. All right, and our fourth and final method is using the track saw. And this is the most expensive, mostly because it's not really necessary. Yeah, your table saw you can spend a lot more money on. Yeah, your router table you could spend more money on. A track saw, and this is actually a lower cost option than a Festool. Um, it's the Makita, and it is rock solid. But it really isn't a necessary tool. You can get by with the skill saw. So that's why I'm calling it the most expensive, although it is pretty nice to have. So this method you just use a track, it will cut straight every single time. And the nice thing is you can get more than one track. Each of these is about 55 inches, which means I can joint board up to 110. So these little connectors and connect them together. And one of the reasons why track saws are great for jointing is because this can cut about two inches thick. So on the router table, we were limited to about one inch stock. Track saw, you can cut a much thicker board. And that's why I said at the beginning of this, these are four methods that I use in my shop. And I do. They each have their purpose. They each have their time and place. And it's always good to have more than one option. Now, for an additional tip on track saws, if you're looking into buying one, get one with cord. I know that you can buy them with just batteries, but anything that, that is going to be hooked up to a dust collector and or a vacuum should have a cord because you're going to have it corded anyway and you always want to run this with some type of vacuum or extractor or something else so get the cord you never have to worry about recharging batteries well there you have it four ways to join a board and if any of those four were new to you and you learned something today i'd appreciate it if you subscribe down below and while you're down there feel free to leave me a comment. Which one of these is your favorite method that you use in your shop? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.